This video is brought to you by my Patreon team who have helped me a lot just being able to purchase equipment to make this content for you. So if you want to join the Patreon team, please feel free to click the link down below. And if not, of course, I hope you just enjoy the video. Okay, here we go. Just one last time in the Mafia universe. With each game and video, we have discussed how the main characters' personalities, ambitions and flaws have guided us, the player, through some of the best written stories that gaming could offer. The Mafia series has always been respected and become iconic for its perfect interpretation of the gangster genre. We have been shocked by death of characters, heartfelt by the love of others and most importantly, seduced by that life of crime and money, just like any good gangster story should. Through Tommy's story, we were shown a life where he wanted to be respected by friends and finally get away from the mundane life of rude customers while driving around his taxi. Finally, Tommy found himself an opportunity to be the man he wanted to be, despite never really intending to wanting to get into a life of crime. But with this freedom came an unfortunate task and most importantly, an undeniable amount of guilt that waited on his shoulders. While on the other hand, we played as Vito in Mafia 2, who was brought up in a life of poverty and was raised to fend for himself, getting into crime and stealing for his whole life. Vito's dream in life was to become rich and respected to get away from that past that he was brought up in. To be in a family, to be respected, to live that luxurious life of power. But in turn, Vito pushed away everyone he loved and got exiled from his family that he wanted to join in the first place. Losing the love of his real family and siblings, losing his best friend to his actions, but most importantly, falling victim to the consequences of his actions that he chose to do throughout the story of Mafia 2. The mob lifestyle in each game has been impressive, seductive, intimidating, and shined an untouchable presence that has seen the end of so many lives. But Mafia 3 introduced change to the series, unlike anything ever seen before in the franchise. Mafia 3 shows us how a man becomes a legend, becomes untouchable, to stop this vicious cycle that the life of a mobster has made. But before he becomes a legend, there is just one simple name, and that name is Lincoln Clay. Lincoln Clay. Lincoln Clay. Lincoln Clay. Lincoln, Lincoln, Clay. Lincoln, Clay. Lincoln Clay. My name is Lincoln Clay, motherfucker. When Mafia 3 came out, it was hit with a mixed reception for sure. On one hand, you had a story that stands out with the rest of the series and can honestly hold itself as one of the best stories told on the 8th generation of consoles. But on the other hand, there was this gameplay that had a huge departure from what was expected from the Mafia franchise, focusing more on the gaming traditions of the third person shooter. Auto aiming, slow motion, over the top executions, it was clear from the start that this game was going to be very different and like the fans and me myself, we didn't expect it and in turn we didn't enjoy it as much as we possibly should have. But now that I've given this game plenty of time and I've gone through the franchise with a fine tooth comb, I found myself having a new love and appreciation for the style and story that was created for Mafia 3. Tommy's guilt-driven journey to betrayal, Vito's greed-obsessed mindset to be someone, and now Lincoln Clay being driven by rage and revenge to finally stop the mob lifestyle once and for all and introducing change to this never-ending cycle of death. Now, the Mafia franchise has always had an interesting way of handling the open-world genre. Instead of filling the world with side missions and markers, they instead give us a linear story experience, but this world around us feels like it's created mainly for our characters and their personalities and stories that are trying to be told. We don't feel like a soulless body forced to investigate and uncover parts of these worlds, but instead these cities already feel like home for our characters. For both Vito and Tommy, they knew their cities, so in turn the game treated us like we should do as well. But Mafia 3 takes a very different approach to having this feeling. Clay is part of the black mob during the 1960s, so Hangar 13 wanted to make sure the whole city felt like it was full of personality that unfortunately is filled and translated with racism, crime and of course discrimination. 
from the police often only responding to crimes if it's in a typically white area to being asked to leave certain shops because you're a black man and of course every judgmental look that Clay gets just from walking across the street. As I said, this franchise has built its worlds through the lens of our main characters, and this one is no different. But why am I bringing this up? Why is this important? Because of this game's brutal interpretation of the civil rights movement and how people were treated back then just for their ethnicity, this open world and the way that people was treated creates an entirely new way for the seduction of the mafia lifestyle to weave its way into the story and is unlike anything that we've seen before in any other video game. Clay is a Vietnam veteran, ex-CIA. He was a man filled with a lot of aggression and power and the Vietnam War allowed him to live that soldier life he wanted to. But when it was time to come back home, he came back with a few scars. But just like Tommy's cabbie or Vito's warehouse work, Clay finds himself back in mundanity, serving food in a kitchen behind a counter. Instantly, the themes of the franchise return. Are you happy doing what you're doing for a living? And what would you do to change that? But this time Clay isn't Tommy. He isn't asking for a favor. He isn't Vito and lucky enough to have connections in the right places. But instead, he's something more. Hangar 13 throws that formula in the franchise's face. And I mean that literally. Clay is all of a sudden thrown against the gang of Haitians and then springs into action. This story isn't about guilt, it isn't about greed, but instead they wanted to tell a story about power. Clay's skills from the Vietnam War and training are all seen and carved into this world right alongside with the racism and discrimination. The radical turn of gameplay in the franchise is right in line and in spirit of what the franchise is to expect. So when Clay loses everything he loved from the betrayal of the mob, we alongside Clay turn that all into rage and it sets the tone for one hell of a revenge plot. We have been glorifying the personalities of the mob lifestyle in films and gaming forever. So when it comes to that romanticism of the lifestyle that we've seen in the second Mafia game, the rise of the mobster is very important and it has a legacy that it's left behind in any form of media. But whatever comes up must eventually come down. But how do you defeat a legacy? Mafia 3 didn't intend to sell the mob lifestyle to you all over again. No, they wanted you to tear it down. This game captures and creates so many spectacular moments of action and isn't sorry for how detached it may feel from the franchise. Clay is a 6 foot 4 ball of muscle and pure anger. Every hard hit and takedown, every one liner was sold to you on that feeling of empowerment and it complements the environments and the racism that goes along with it. Every disgusting personality, every single whorehouse that you find yourself in, every waist high bit of cover that is intentionally set up for you to take cover. This game has an unapologetic amount of style, anger and most importantly empowerment that comes along with every interaction. Hangar 13 had one goal for you, become untouchable, become Lincoln Clay. The guns all sound impactful, the slow motion allows you to feel superhuman, the driving has never felt better in the series, the animated and beautifully motion captured environmental takedowns leave every gunfight looking like an old mobster newspaper thread and every enemy's corpse hanging over boxes, leaning against walls and squirming on the floor for mercy as you deliver street justice through the end of the gun was all intentional and it just feels fantastic. This time around you're not a cabbie, you're not a criminal in it for the money, no, you're Lincoln Clay, the ex-CIA soldier, a man in a world that was built for pushing him down. Gunshots, explosions become the soundtrack to his life. And speaking of a soundtrack... Mafia 3 looks and sounds like a revenge movie. The soundtrack is probably one of the best components that really make this game stand out and it's probably one of the best soundtracks I've heard from a game. There are so many great tracks that are intentionally created for this game when you're in a scurry of a fight, but where the magic lies is in its jukebox soundtracks. Songs like Paint It Black, Aretha Franklin's Respect, Jimi Hendrix Along the Watchtower, and so many great classics from Credence Clearwater Revival. 
That fantasy or feeling like a revenge driven action hero doesn't just come from the characters on screens, but instead the sounds that we link with them. When you hear the iconic Fortunate Son intro accompanied by a gang of racist clan members, it immediately speaks to your mind and tells you what you're meant to do here. You find yourself reaching for your gun and walking in slow motion like a badass because this game wants you to feel like that. It makes sure it wants you to feel like Rambo, it makes you want to feel like someone in a war zone fighting for their life and fighting for change. With this soundtrack accompanied with any action sequence, there's no way that you cannot feel like the hero of your own story. Hell yeah Mafia 3 succeeds in blending its world, character and soundtrack into one perfect feeling, and that feeling is of course being untouchable. And I've used that word a lot, and that's because that's that Mafia mentality we are sold, as so are so many gangsters and thugs seen in this franchise. They were sold that glamorised lie and they felt untouchable. They've all been brainwashed by that lifestyle of a mobster and being a gangster. And honestly, I feel like Mafia 3 had a scene that put it best as said by Olivia Marcano. I, I never thought. You get shot. Precisely. The first time I saw Lucio, he looked so handsome. Dash, he, he wore the finest suits, drove the best cars. There was always something terribly romantic about all of this. There ain't nothing romantic about robbing and killing people. Or maybe not. But it certainly was exciting. We too romanticise about that lifestyle of being in the mob. We glamorise their actions, the iconic outfits, all the guns we expect to see from the genre. And they made us believe that being this mobster or being in charge makes you unkillable. And it's a lie that has been sold throughout the whole franchise. From San Trapini to Cerigo Morello, Marty, Henry and of course now Sal Marcano all victims of that untouchable life that was sold to them and sold to us through the media and the lifestyle and it showed one thing that no one is untouchable when clay finally gets to the top of sal's casino and kills him and kicks him out of a window he's given them three choices stay and run the gangs in the streets and become what you tried so hard to kill kill your whole gang and die in a car bomb accident or leave and never come back and disappear into the sunlight. The truth of the matter is here it truly doesn't matter what happens to Clay. Because Clay became that boogeyman of the mob. He became the fear criminal but most of all, he became a legend. And you truly cannot touch a legend. Hi, that's it. We're done with the Mafia franchise. Unless they make a, a, a fourth game, which I would love, please. That'd be great. Obviously, I know there's four games because they remade the original, but that doesn't really count. But yes, I hope you enjoyed this video because I wanted to take a look at the approach on how they tried to sell to you that that fantasy of being your own action hero in a universe that was built up to be so realistic like the Mafia franchise. I think they did a fantastic job despite the game still having a lot of pacing issues. I feel like the story and the gameplay that it tries to tell you is just fantastic and phenomenal and Mafia 3 I think really deserves a second chance and when you go into it with a totally different mindset of what you expect to get from the franchise. If you did enjoy Mafia 3, please let me know down below or even then what is your favourite Mafia game in the series. If you enjoyed this video of course please feel free to subscribe and why not like for more videos like this every single week and of course I will see you at the next checkpoints. Goodbye.